our sun really kicks things into overdrive this week. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we do have about eight active regions in Earth view, but the ones to pay attention to are regions 3293, 96, 97, and a little bit of 3299 as well. Over the past week, these regions have fired no less than 13 M-class flares between an R1 to an R2 level radio blackout. And there's even been some more big flares prior to that. But this is when they really started getting busy because they began to fire solar storms as well. In fact, back on the 7th, late on the 7th, into the 8th, you can see region 3296, pow, right there, launch a partly Earth-directed solar storm. This solar storm has since reached Earth and it's kind of giving us a glancing blow off to the west. So we're not seeing a lot of activity, although there was some uh, aurora clear down to Illinois as of last night. Meanwhile, we are still watching these regions and then late on the uh, 9th into the 10th, BAM! Right there. Look at that. That was a massive uh, R2 level radio blackout. This ended up being uh, also launching a big solar storm towards Earth, and we're now waiting for this solar storm to reach us, which we'll talk more about in a minute. But meanwhile, everybody who has a Starlink uh, internet connection, believe it or not, those long ping times, that's not your equipment. That's the sun, because this particular radio blackout actually had a radio burst. When we looked at the Owens Valley Solar Array, we had a radio burst that went up to about 16 gigahertz. So yes, the sun can scream louder than your satellites on Earth's day side, and we're just going to have to deal with those types of blackouts clear up into those bands until this region rotates to the sun's far side, which will be in the next couple of days. Now, as we take a look at our sun's far side, this is stereo A, and it's looking at the sun just a tiny bit from the side. You can see all of the activity activity really is center disk and rotating to the uh, west limb in stereo's view, but you do see a few active regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view here over the next couple days. However, they don't look nearly as flare active as the ones that we are dealing with right now, so this does mean we should get a bit of a respite. I know these radio blackouts have been extremely hard on radio comms and space traffic over the last uh, week or so, and it looks like it's getting worse before it's getting better. We are also dealing with some radiation storms that are causing havoc for aviation as well. So just kind of hang in there, guys. Things will get better over the next maybe two weeks or so as things quiet down. And let's hope that this set of players does not survive its backside passage. And once they rotate back into Earth view again in two weeks, things will be nice and quiet. Now, returning to those Earth-directed solar storms, we switch to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil. Now, this is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity, and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. And the first solar storm you can see being launched, this was the one that launched late on the 7th into the 8th, and it's actually already been hitting Earth over the last 24 hours. It has bumped us up to storm levels periodically, but for the most part, it's kind of a sideswipe. It's kind of go mainly uh, to the west of Earth. And then you can see the second solar storm being launched. This was the one that was launched late on the 9th, and this one, as you can see, is much faster, maybe a, a little bit more of a direct hit, in fact. And we're expecting this one to hit Earth about midday on the 11th. And right now, we do have a G3 watch. NOAA has put that out over the last 24 hours, and we do expect to see Aurora reach well into mid-latitude. So this is going to be kind of a one-two punch. It could give us a really decent Aurora show over the next few days, and then hopefully things after this will kind of settle back down. For more details on this week's space weather, including how the solar storms and those solar flare radio bursts might affect space traffic and radio comms, come check out my channel or see me at spaceweatherwoman.com.